I've degreased and washed down the heads and gave them a quick uh, blow down the airline. And now I'm going to try and get that homemade jobby. It's homemade bad boy. Get it in the drill, drill press and see if we can get the valves out. And uh, yeah, see which exactly which ones are all bent. By the looks of it, uh, it's at least two per cylinder. But yeah, let's see what we like. Right, so you can see the heads are all disassembled on the bench in order as they came out. Uh, and yeah, we've got a lot of bent valves. What you say, pretty much 98% 90, of them are, are bent. Hey, I've got a favourite one. Where is he? Oh, here he goes. That's my favourite one. I don't know if you can pick it up. He's a bloody beauty. Yeah, he's a good one. So also we've got the new gaskets and valve stem seals. They've taken over two weeks to come, which is a bit of a pain in the butt, but they're eventually here. So um, we'll just crack on and take the old valve stem seals out of the heads. Now, I don't have the proper tool for taking them out. I'm gonna use long nose pliers. So internet, please don't lose your shit. I'll be as careful as I can and try and take it out. And then we can uh, pop in the new ones and start uh, assembling this all again and, and uh, try and try and get on a bit. All right, let's just get on with it. Right, to help aid putting the valve stem seals on, I've got a 10mm socket here, 3 8 drive, and it's like the perfect diameter to fit around the top of the seal, the hard part. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll be able to push down on that with even force onto the, the uh, valve guide and you should just feel it locate and that's you all the way home and that should be right that should be it times 30 let's crack on Right, let me try and quickly show you what's going on here. I've got the head back on the drill press and I made, I ended up making my own one, the same as what Grant had, uh, but it was longer and smaller diameter so that I could get into the uh, inlet side because they're a lot, lot smaller diameter. Um, just made that out of a bit of 
is it 20 mil pipe cut that then it was just an old um wire brush that i cut the bristles off and ground it so that they, they would fit in and uh, and it's it's ideal it does it does a job for all we're doing it's fine probably better run a tackle welder in there maybe but it's not the pressure's going down the way it's never going to move it just doesn't matter So basically, spring goes in, locates, wait until I get that sitting nice. Then, top part part. And then the difficult part is obviously getting the keepers in. It's all very well picking them out with a pick, and you've got your magnet in that. That's kind of hard enough, but trying to get them back in again and actually locating them on that three grooves on the valve stem that's going to be an absolute pig three grooves the two grooves yeah it's three grooves <laughs> not that matters uh yeah so that's going to be a pig but let me just try and show you quickly what is going on here so oh hi cool um let me just get up a bit why this one bit there you go and then we'll go down let's try and move this Pretty hard with a cam in your hand. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Basically, what you want, you need this to come down, compress. You see the valve, top of the valve stem coming through. I've then got to try and get look. I'll try and get my keepers in there, located on the grooves, and then let it go, and it should obviously keep the valve in there. I'll try and set the camera up so you can see the first one getting done and then I'll just wrap it through it on uh, time warp. Okay, let's crack on. Come on. Up you go. Come on. Right, swing around. I'm getting cramp. Oh yes, yes. Come on. Oh, yes. Oh, what? We're like thirty out of that. Okay. Right, let's go. Sunday night. Uh, I'm on holiday this week. My mate Chaffee's on holiday as well. He's going to fire around, and um, we're going to try and push this on a bit because it's been going. It's been sat for a while now. Um, those gaskets and seals and that coming a bit late was didn't didn't help things. So if he comes round, we'll try and. Uh, fire on and get this thing pushed on a bit tonight um, and see if we can get this thing started up pretty soon all right see you in a bit The reason I've got the 2.7 turbo manifold on the engine, the inlet manifold, is because I was trying to free up some space at the back of the engine. Um, the 2.8 comes uh, manifold, it comes with the um, throttle body at the back. So I thought I'd put this on and get the, get the throttle body at the front would free up space at the back uh, to try and get a turbo down the back there somewhere. Um, so that's the reason why I've got that, because this, this set up at the moment. I'm having a faff about with. 
make it up a bit easier in there. Um, this is the 2.8 rail that's on there. All I did to get that to fit was, uh, I mean obviously the injectors are in the same place. I just had to elongate the, the holes, the mountain holes, and it fitted straight on. And that meant that obviously my feed and return just went straight on as it would before. Next on the list uh, is to make a throttle cable bracket. Need to set about there somewhere. So I've got a few tabs here I can come off of. Probably just this one here. I'll see what I've got in my pile of scrap. I've got these, I've come across these, uh, I think I bought from Liddles. Just some 90 degree back brackets. I, mean, I bought them for doing the shed or something. I think it was to do the support the shed roof or something like that. So I'm just wondering if I can maybe use them and try and come up with something. Uh, that hole there kind of lines up down, down on top of that. Alright, maybe come off of there. I don't know. Let's see what I can come up with. Maybe a bit of... Maybe something along the lines of that. Come back like that. Anyway. Let me have a play about and I'll come back. Right, there's the first part of this bracket. As you can see, I just, uh, just cut away clearance to come over across the manifold. Next bit, I'm going to try and do something along those lines. So, yeah, bear with me. Right, there it goes. Thing of beauty. Give it a paint and we'll stick it on. I've left this tab on here, this corner here, uh, just in case I need to brace it across to this lug here because maybe it might want to twist, but I mean it's, it's solid there and it's working away. Um, but we'll, I'll, I'll always leave it on there at the moment, just in case. May have to come back to it. Right, so there it goes, nothing fancy at all. Uh, my camera 
ran out of memory, so I couldn't get all of it, but it's nothing, nothing fancy at all. It's just a cut out at the back there to clear that part of the coil pack. A couple of mounting holes with some cap screws to mount it to the to the bracket, uh, and then a couple of holes drilled through just to mount it to the manifold. I've got my cap screws there, a little, little mount it on. So now we'll just give it a quick, a quick rub down. Uh, get some X primer on it and then give it a bit of black and you'll never see it it'll be invisible if I had a milling machine I'd probably get all fancy and cut out bits here you know, and leave a little tab just for but I don't so I won't so the throttle cable is now working and we've got the coil mounted and I've also uh, raked out a idle control valve. It's just a Bosch two wire open and close setup. I've uh, plumbed and wired that in in the back there. So that should give us a hopefully give us a steady steady enough idle. So now uh, we'll button up the front, get the radiator on, and get some coolant in it. Uh, get the lights back in and just get ready for going up the road. Let's we'll crack on with that. Whoa, it's actually got a face. Getting excited. Right, let's get some cool in it. Daddy! Daddy! What? Daddy! Yes! Daddy! Daddy! Meow! Daddy! Yeah?